Here's an object that's rolling without slipping. So that means that the point of contact between this rolling object and the ground must be stationary. So all along the edge of this round object, you have different velocities. So some parts of it are moving up and kind of at an angle. Some parts are moving down and kind of at an angle. The point right on the top is moving to the right. And that one point of contact with, with the ground is where it's actually stationary at this precise moment in time. Otherwise, you would have slipping. So my goal here is to find some relationship between the spin rate of this object and how fast the center of mass is tracking to the right. And the way that we get a handle on this is to switch to the center of mass reference frame. In other words, I'm going to run alongside this thing with a speed of V center of mass. So I'm matching the speed of the rolling object, and that makes the center of the object look stationary. Well, if I'm running along to the right with a speed of V center of mass, then what am I going to see for that contact point? Well, it was stationary in the original reference frame, and now I'm running to the right. So that contact point is now moving to the left. It's coming at me with a speed of V center of mass. And in this reference frame, I still see a spinning object spinning at the same rotation rate of omega. I'm still going to see it do as many turns per second. So that stays the same. But the advantage of switching to this reference frame is that in this reference frame, I see pure rotation from my perspective. And I have a formula for pure rotation relating the speed at the edge of a disk to the radius and the angular velocity. So it's as simple as this. I just figured out that the magnitude of V center of mass is equal to R omega. So it's kind of the simplest possible result. Um, as this thing is rolling along, uh, there was no reason to expect that it, would, that it would be so simple. But by switching into a new reference frame, we figured out the center of mass of this rolling object is equal to R times omega. Let's apply our new formula to an example. So in this example, I want the percent of the total kinetic energy in the translational part and the rotational part for a solid ball that's rolling along without slipping. And we're given a formula for the moment of inertia of a solid ball that's 2 fifths mr squared. So let's get a little picture of the ball in here. There we go. And we have a center of mass velocity, which I called vcm. And then at the same time, of course, this object is rotating in order to roll along the ground. And I'm going to write down the total kinetic energy. So K total is the translational piece, one half times the total mass times center of mass velocity squared, plus the rotational piece, one half moment of inertia with respect to the center of mass times omega squared. And one thing I didn't really specify with this formula up here for moment of inertia is that's the moment of inertia of a solid ball rotated about its center. And that geometric center is the center of mass, so we don't have to worry about any nuance there. The way to get a comparison between these two terms, this is the translational term and this is the rotational term, is to eliminate omega or eliminate v center of mass. And I'm going to choose to eliminate omega. So for rolling without slipping, we know that v center of mass is r times omega. So omega is v center of mass divided by r. And I'm going to go ahead and sub that in right here. So I end up with 1 half times the mass times center of mass speed squared plus 1 half times the moment of inertia for this ball, and that's 2 fifths mr squared. And then I get omega is v center of mass over r, and I'm going to square that. And when I square that, something interesting happens. The radius cancels up, and that means that's not relevant to the question of what the percent of kinetic energy is in each of these terms. And let's clean things up a little. And I have 1 half mv center of mass squared plus the 2's cancel in the second term. And I have 1 fifth mv center of mass squared. And our question here is what percentage of this energy is in each of these terms? So to find the translational part, I guess I'll write it like this, percent kinetic energy translational. I'm going to take the translational piece and divide by the total. So that's 1 half mv center of mass squared over 1 half mv center of mass squared plus 1 fifth mv center of mass squared. So in the denominator, I have the total kinetic energy. 
Notice that an m times v center of mass squared cancels out of all three of those terms. And I'm left with 1 half divided by 1 half plus 1 fifth. I'm going to multiply the top and bottom by 10. And I end up with a 5 in the numerator. Uh, this first term in the denominator becomes a 5. And the second term in the denominator becomes a 2. And I end up with 5 sevenths. 5 sevenths of the energy is in that translational part. Um, but I wanted a percentage out of it. So I'm going to divide 5 by 7 and multiply by 100 and write it as a percent. And when I do that, I get 71.4%. What about the percent in the rotational system? You could just say 100% minus the thing that I just got, but I wanted to go ahead and verify that it works. So I have my rotational piece, 1 fifth mv center of mass squared divided by my total kinetic energy, 1 half mv center of mass squared plus a 1 fifth mv center of mass squared. It gives me 1 fifth over 1 half plus 1 fifth, and I multiply the top and bottom by 10, and I end up with 2 over 5 plus 2, or 2 sevenths, which I can verify then adds to 1 or 100%. So that's good. As a percentage, this is 28.6%.